so much for dropping in. It's story day. But I will tinker as, uh, as I talk. Now if you remember, some of you, I was having troubles with this otherwise regularly beautiful and tested disk drive. I was having troubles. In that it would run the performance test and seem to pass the performance test, but weird things were happening. Now also, I was testing a whole lot of disks in this drive, so I'm pondering Maybe something happened in there. Maybe the heads need clean, but it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Anyway, I was answering a message from a fellow. There was a video of me that recently appeared on the channel of Fran Blanche, I think her name is. And it was some lost 16 millimeter film that somehow she came upon and found. And indeed it was me for a little less than two minutes when I worked at the Toronto Pet Users Group. Anyway, I have been keeping up on the questions and comments and things there. Most of them are quite dignified and respectful. Some of them I just ignore. Anyway, <coughs> so there was a fellow who was telling me how he had, uh, I think he said he bought his first copy of Run never bought another one, not because he didn't want to, but because he had signed up for the Navy, it seems. And then he went into training and things and stuff. And anyway, he ended up in the, somehow in the data department. And indeed his time spent tinkering and puttering and learning on the various Commodore machines, starting with the PET and probably going to the 64, um, had helped him tremendously in his, uh, endeavors in the naval world. <clears throat> and so I wrote back a lengthy reply about, you know, all knowledge is good and it's all about training the brain to think in a certain way or be able to take things apart piece by piece. And somehow or another I got thinking about uh, punch cards because when I was in high school in Toronto we had we had to use punch cards. Some some of them we actually bubbled with a pencil and others there were these um, elaborate terminals where cards would go in and you would punch things on a keyboard and then the right things would get punched onto the card. And then they would have to be put in a hopper and and down to the board office they would be transmitted and then at night they would be run and the next day printouts would come back. Things are happening here. Anyway, printouts would come back, the teacher would separate the printouts, you'd get the thing back, you'd see your error messages and you'd go from there. I much preferred, no, oh, I still got trouble here. Oh dear. We are failing. Yeah, there's... A, anyway, as I've said before, there's an error in this because it's definitely failing. But it says it passed. Anyway, I'll have to work on this. Oh well. Anyway, I much preferred the things where we could sit and type and holes were punched rather than taking and bubbling in because there was always the chance of error. Funny, you know, the, the still these systems, similar systems are used for doing tests. Um, I had seen many, 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 many times this system called Questron where people would lay out a uh, an exam, multiple choice exam, and whatever class and you would be given a little card and you had to bubble in your answer and then indeed they had a card reader. Um, it didn't get transmitted anywhere, it would just 
go through and it would be marked. The teacher would put through the master at the beginning and then the rest would follow and it's funny, you knew when somebody did really well when it really made almost no noise because what it would do is it would, as it read it, it would print at the top the correct answer if there was an error. So anyway, just as the teacher was running things through as you were walking by, you could hear who did well. You didn't know who, but you just knew if there was a good card or a bad card, because if it sounded kind of like a little machine gun going off, certainly it had gone well. Anyway, I digress. Anyway, back to my days in high school with either the bubbling or the card puncher. Um, as, you know, th oh, wait a second, <laughs> we are, we are on the air. There we go. As things progressed, at some point, the class did get a couple of, or maybe it was just one, but it was a print terminal. So that you could actually go on and do things and see them. And, and there would be paper there and, you know, you could do your program and check things and stuff. But, but of course, then the Board of Education, after spending who knows how much on this terminal, would not supply paper for it. And, of course, this was tractor paper. It was actually the big stuff, kind of, oh, maybe it was 11 by 17. And, of course, the school said, well, we're not getting paper. So we had this terminal sitting there that was, you know, newer and, and, and better, but we couldn't use it. So the students and our teacher conspired to get paper. And that is we all, um, I think he had two or three of these classes. Everybody wrote a little program and all the little program would do was spit out 10 pages. And that's all it would do. And, you know, there were no error. I would just do it. Anyway, so he had his, oh, maybe it was between 75 and 100 students all do what was called a paper program. And he would have the deck of cards because you had to, you know, they all had to be in the right order and they all had to be just so. And then whenever we were running low on paper, he would take the deck, which was a little bit from every student in all of his classes, and put them in the hopper, and they would get fed off, and the next day, with all the printouts, and, and they all came in the order that they were sent and received. So, um, whenever he ran this, and I think he strategically ran it at the end of, or the beginning of the day, um, he knew that when the big pile of paper came in, that um, the first bit, or the last bit, was going to be the paper program stuff, so he could quickly get all the good stuff off and keep that big stack of paper separate. And of course there was writing on the one side, so we just fed it into the print terminal upside down. And then we had paper and the print terminal could be used. So, um, it's funny, this went on for a very long time and nothing was ever said. Um, it was noted at some point by somebody at the board that our school used to seem to use a lot more paper than anybody else. Imagine that. Anyway, I still remember the sound of the hopper as the cards would be sucked in and read. And, uh, and then somehow or another it got upgraded and it would do it a lot faster. Anyway, they were interesting days. We wrote in a variety of languages and, uh, but the error message would always come through clear. And of course, the cards had to be in the right order. It didn't sort things out. So if you mixed up the cards, you were in trouble and you had to figure out um, how to get them back in order or just simply start again. Because really every card was a line in the program. And there were no line numbers when it went in. Um, it was, you know, here's the hundred cards, here's the hundred lines, or whatever it was, away they go. If they were in the wrong order, you were screwed. 
And I remember hearing a story of some guy at university had a massive pile of cards and he was going down the hall and I think it was winter and I think he slipped and the card just went whoosh. And of course there was really nothing on each card to tell you which way they should be. Well, not, you could tell which way because there was a little dodge, but in what order. There was nothing there. It was just these punch cards with holes. And I think he was seen gathering them up after picking himself up and walking down the hall. And there, there were hundreds of these things in this pile. Um, this was, of course, before the days of recycling, so I think he was just seen throwing it in the garbage. And, of course, he probably headed back to the lab to start fresh. Anyway, a painful moment, I am sure. Well, I'm not going to tinker on this drive any further at the moment. I think just to satisfy my curiosity, I will find another one. I think I have another one around and run it and see, just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the discs. Or, but I will look for my Q-tips. I have rubbing compound over there. I'll clean the head. It probably won't make any difference. It may be that this drive mechanism actually is somewhat defective. And aligning disk drives is not impossible, but it's never been my specialty. So, thanks for coming. Thanks for taking this trip down memory lane to uh, a time pretty much 40 years ago when punch cards and bubble cards were what we learned on, even though they were already at that time pretty much obsolete. That's what we did. But as I said, it was painful at the time, kind of like using a data set instead of a disk drive. But all learning, all knowledge is good. Because eventually there may be a situation comes up that is not the same, but somehow maybe related, or that you can just take a little tweak something that you learned back in those painful days and apply it to the situation while everybody else sits there and says how do they know this stuff it's called wisdom and experience and sometimes wisdom and experience are things that are painfully learned painfully painfully anyway Thanks for coming. If you do get a moment to check out Fran Blanche's channel, you will see me there in a video that was made, well it's now a video, it was a film shot on 16mm film in 1983. In other words, 39 years ago. And I remember when it was made, but I never did see the result of what was made until about a month ago. Some almost four decades later. Imagine that. My hair was quite different, as was most of me. Indeed. All right, that's it. That's all. Enough for now. Until we meet again, keep your stick on the ice, stay safe, stay healthy, and if you hear thunder, because there is thunder here today, Go inside. Don't go hide under a tree. Bye for now.